Wi-Fi is a constantly evolving battleground. There's tons of Wi-Fi hacking videos on YouTube, and for good reason. All of our Wi-Fi standards have been compromised over the last few years. Even the latest standard, WPA3, has problems? And it isn't even in use yet. WEP, the OG standard, came about in 1999 and was the first method of protecting your network. However, just two years after its release, researchers discovered fatal flaws in its design. So where do we stand in 2019? How can WEP be cracked? How many people use it? And, and what are we doing about it? Maltronics.com is a site I own and run. We sell a range of hobbyist hacker gadgets, from Wi-Fi deauthors to bad USBs, from USB protectors to Wi-Fi keyloggers. We ship worldwide, so come have a look. Check it out in the description, maltronics.com. WEP might as well stand for, wow, enormous problem. Though in actuality, it stands for the much more boring and, and somewhat misleading Wired Equivalence Privacy. Though according to official IEEE documents back in 1994, it was only ever meant to protect against casual eavesdropping. Perhaps our ancestors, all those years ago, back in 1994, burning the midnight oil, forging antiquated ciphers by candlelight, just didn't foresee how important Wi-Fi would become. So why is WEP so weak and insecure? Well, WEP typically uses up to 128-bit key, and whilst this may take billions of years to brute force, this isn't where the issue lies. So I'll try not to make this next bit too complicated, but in layman's terms, WEP uses these things called initialization vectors. They're 24 bits long and are meant to help randomize the encrypted packets. However, given they're only 24 bits long, that gives about 16 million different IVs, which might sound like a lot. A different IV is used for each packet sent. But, but if you're patient enough, you can just wait for some of these IVs to be reused. After all, on a busy network, 16 million packets won't take too long. Then you can use statistical attacks to look for patterns in packets which use the same IVs and thus derive the passphrase. This is a very simplified explanation, so if you're a professor of cryptography, don't, don't beat me up too much in the comments, please. Of course, it's a lot more complicated in theory. However, practically speaking, it's real easy to do. A fresh copy of Kali comes with everything you need to crack a web access point. Using the Aircrack suite of tools, it's super simple to break into one of these routers. Now, I won't cover how to do so in this video, though I'll leave a link to a Nullbyte video in the description where he shows you how to do just that. However, the days of cracking arbitrary Wi-Fi networks for any tangible gain are a little behind us. Back in the day, hacking a neighbor's Wi-Fi network meant stealing their bandwidth when you had run out. Let's not forget, home broadband wasn't always unlimited. Wait, wait, what? You Americans still have to deal with that? Ouch. And nowadays, most sites that handle sensitive data typically use HTTPS, which wasn't so prevalent in the early 2000s. So today, even if you manage to crack a network's encryption in order to snoop some data, you're stuck with yet another layer of obfuscation, SSL. And good luck getting through that. Heartbleed 2.0, anyone? But what about WEP in 2019? Well, according to Wiggle.net, roughly 6% of all Wi-Fi networks still use WEP. Wiggle collates their data using their Wiggle Wi-Fi war driving app. Anyone can download this app, which scans for nearby Wi-Fi networks, the SSID, encryption type. All this data you collate is then contributed to their publicly available map, which is, which is really quite extensive. However, it's not clear if they phase out old networks in their database, so some of these WEP networks may have gone offline years ago. Either way, there are a ton of WEP networks still out there, and I'm sure you can understand why non-techies just don't feel the need to upgrade. For instance, try explaining to your NAN that the implementation of the RC4 cipher in WEP is vulnerable to statistical attacks. The initialization vector is just too short, you see. As of May this year, Windows 10 will now start warning you if you're connecting to a WEP-protected network. They go on to say, in a future release, any connection to a Wi-Fi network using these old ciphers will be disallowed. Microsoft said, Wi-Fi routers should be updated to use AES ciphers available with WPA2 or WPA3. In the wake of WEP being discovered to be so insecure, people had to come up with something better and something fast. WPA was its successor, standing for Wi-Fi Protected Access, which was released in 2003. This brought a myriad of improvements, but has since found to be insecure itself and was depreciated in 2012. Fast forward a few more years and we now have WPA3 on the horizon. However, shortly after that was announced, a few vulnerabilities were found in it, and then a few more problems were discovered later on. If you want to learn more about the vulnerabilities in what was meant to be our lord and saviour WPA3, 
I'll have one of my previous videos linked in the description. PCBWay is a long-time supporter of the channel. I've used them countless times, so anytime I need PCB fabrication, they're my go-to. PCBWay has recently launched their advanced PCB service. If you need your board built to the highest of specifications for professional applications, check them out in the description. PCBWay.com So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked this video, the best thing you can do is share it. As always, stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.